This issue of complexion obsession is seen but not heard. Where did the obsession with light skin begin and how did it become so prevalent in our culture? There is a huge disparity in the experiences that people have with color. Some don't see the obsession of light skin as a significant issue, yet others see things the polar opposite. I don't feel like it's a huge issue unless somebody brings it up. You know, I don't, to tell you the truth, I really don't hear about it a lot with my friends that are biracial. But there's bias in long hair, short hair. <laughs> there's bias, you know, big booty. Okay, sometimes booty's in, sometimes breasts are in. And I think it's just more about mixing it all together and, and it's not really about race, it's just about getting that spot and, and being the right one for the right part. I don't pay attention to that. If it's going on, then I must have a blinders. I'm a very confident woman. I'm very secure in who I am. What's meant for me is meant for me, and no one can take that away. It's about the energy you put out. It's about what you exude when you go in the room. So you can't sit up there and just be pouting because it's a whole room full of light-skinned girls. You're just focusing on color. Why don't you focus on yourself? Because if you have a great personality and they love you, they're going to want to be around you. And that's at the end of the day, nobody wants to be around a woman just talking about, oh, I don't want to be around her because she got this. You may be missing out on a really great business opportunity focusing on race instead of focusing on yourself as a woman. I think dark skin girls are discouraged from modeling now because they don't see as many girls that represent them when they turn on television. They don't see as many girls that look like them when they open magazines. And it's sad because they're very beautiful. Just to be honest, a lot of times at these video shoots, it might be a lot more Spanish girls show up. Because mm. a lot of times I go to the videos, not saying sisters don't model, because they do, but I believe a lot more of the other ethnicities are, are, are modeling more. Now, when you started modeling, like how did it become more of a, more noticeable to you? Like what are some um, situations that made you think that, okay, my, my dark skin is... Well, one time, it was a group of us, we went for an audition for Rip the Runway, and we were on the line, and one of the girls that I was with was like, we need to all split up, because you know they're not picking all five of us, and we're all dark. Even with a music video, they're not gonna pick, a whole, have a whole video with five bad dark skin girls. They'll have one token. And even you go look at the magazine now. Look at the covers. Show magazine, they have a whole edition dedicated to Latinos, then they have a white girl edition. These girls are beautiful. It does not take anything away from them, but they have their own audience of their own race. As far as we go, we only have the black people as our fan base and hoped that we can cross over. It relates to um, the concept of black beauty and, and um, Eurocentrism and it's, it's a very, very complicated, multi-layered um, conversation and, and discussion and it's, it's filled with a lot of anger and stuff that I really like to stay very far away from. Look how long, like this has been going on since Probably since back in the day with slavery, like, because you had the slaves that would be in the house, and then you had the ones that would be in the field. So this this stems from a very long time. And I think that those people from then carried it on to their, you know, their grandchildren and stuff. And this is why it's so strong now. Who knows, maybe it goes back to the days of slavery when the people that got to stay in the house that were the house you know, slaves were supposedly better than the people that work outside in the field in the sun all day. Who knows? If you really want to take it back, we can take it back to the William Lynch Act. There's a, a, a letter uh, they called, uh, whether it's aesthetic or a myth, of uh, uh, Willie Lynch and the whole notion of he had this proposition of how to control uh, the African in America. And that is to uh, pit the young against the old, uh, men against women, and the light skin against the dark skin. And that uh, if you were able to do this, that you wouldn't have to worry about black people becoming one and unified because we always have this internal conflict. In the history and psychology study, you know, the doll test, and when they, you know, tested young black women with dolls, and uh, a lot of them, for those that might not know, they placed a, a young woman, a young black girl, either from the ghetto, from the inner city, in front of two dolls. The dolls were either a black doll or a white doll, and they would ask the girls which one is prettier. 
and a lot of this, the women of the young girls in the study wound up picking the white doll and saying that was prettier. So little boy, you're so cute. Look at him. Oh, he's adorable. Which doll do you think is prettier if you had to pick? This one. Which doll would you say was prettier? Quick, that one. This one. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Why do you guys think this one's prettier? Because, I mean, I understand up. she's a black baby doll, but they don't make, try to make black baby dolls look cute. They just think it's a black baby they doll, and automatically hair. a black person gonna buy it. Which doll do you guys think is prettier if you had to pick one? This one? Which doll do you think is prettier? This one? Mm -hmm. Well, why do you think that this one's prettier than this one? She's scary and evil and ugly. Seriously? I have a little cousin who told me that he's only going to date white girls. He said that he's seven years old and said he's only going to date white girls and that he doesn't find any black girls attractive. So it starts, he's not getting that mentality from himself. He's getting that from either his friends or other peers or something like that. So it's got to start in our communities to change what the definition of beauty is. We've been conditioned, American society and some blacks, that white, you know, is con connotes beauty uh, and goodness and black connotes evilness and bad and immoral things. I mean, like Jerry J has been on our show and she's the one that I believe Young Berg was supposed to be doing a reality show and he said he really liked her and thought she was very, you know, pretty. But they always say, oh, you're very pretty for a brown skin girl or for a dark skin girl. Now, what, what are some of the things that you've heard or comments that you, you got regarding your um, appearance growing up? Well, growing up, I really never had any issues with my complexion. It wasn't until, like, I got a little bit older, maybe high school, when guys used to always say, like, oh, you're pretty for a dark-skinned girl. They had a problem with it more than me. Like, I didn't even really notice it until people, like, brought it to my attention. Like, you know, you're really pretty for a dark-skinned girl. And I'm like, what? Like, <laughs> so, I mean, like, when people say that to you, what type of reaction would you... Uh, my reaction is usually, when, like, when I first heard it, it was just like, I was with my mother one time, and this guy said it to me, and he was just like, you know, um, wow, like, you're pretty for a dark skin girl. I was probably, like, in 11th grade. And my mother was like, what? Like, what did you say? She's pretty for a dark skin girl. Like, why can't she just be a pretty girl? I didn't really pay it no mind. But when my mother brought it to my attention, I'm like, yeah, right? Like, why do you have to put so much emphasis on my skin color? When people meet me, right, the first thing they look at me, they stare at me a little bit, and they say, you have nice skin. I'm like, okay. And in my mind, I'm like, five, four, three. And they said, yeah, because you have nice skin for a dark skin girl. Like, what are you mixed with? Like, why can't I just be like a Negro chick? Growing up, my family is, it's like, my family looks like the brown section of a crayon box. So I didn't really grow up with the color complex because I saw all kinds of different colors in my family. I've experienced it, you know. There were times where people would say to me, you know, you would be pretty if you were lighter, or you're pretty for a dark-skinned girl. Well, first, I guess, start off with your, your racial background. Well, my mother is African-American, and my father is Italian. My mother's family is from the South. So, uh, actually, my great-grandmother was uh, still has, like, my great-great-grandmother still has whips on her back and stuff because she, they were both slaves. So, it was a big issue in my household with uh, race because they still kind of had bitter feelings over how they were treated and then my mom having biracial children. So it was kind of hard for my great-great-grandmother to accept us because she, it was just so many flashbacks of what happened to her. You know, a lot of the older white folks, there's a lot of older, you know, from the older generations, it's like easier, it seemed like it might be easier for them to accept a light-skinned girl. You know, that they, they might not necessarily accept the dark skin girl. Through years and years of it being like that, sometimes the black man has a, like a subconscious attraction to a light skinned woman. If you were African American or dark skinned, that, you know, you couldn't be beautiful because you didn't have blonde hair, blue eyes, and white skin. This was perpetuated within the culture and society. Uh, some black people internalize this notion of color. I'm still gonna go to an Usher casting. I'm still gonna go to a um, P. Diddy casting. I'm still gonna try, you never know. Like, I might walk in and they may have in their mind that they want an exotic girl, but I may walk in and they may be like, wow, she's gorgeous, I wanna use her. So, you know, at the end of the day, you never know, so I always still like go. I'm, I never like let it get me down. 